Okay, this is Wu uh, Guoguang. Uh, uh, years ago, I edited a volume entitled Zhao Ziyang and China's uh, Political Future. Uh, in 1980s, before the Tiananmen event, uh, once I worked in Beijing as a policy advisor and also speechwriter uh, to then China's Prime Minister Zhao Ziyang. Uh, so in 1989, I left China. Uh, then, you know, I became a political scientist. Uh, when I, you know, uh, uh, do my research on Chinese politics, I thought that, you know, Zhao Ziyang was still uh, relevant to China's, uh, uh, you know, current situation and also uh, political future. Zhao Ziyang uh, is, is no person uh, in today's China. Uh, after 1989, you know, all the things, uh, uh, you know, uh, related to, uh, you know, Tiananmen uh, movement, uh, to leaders like Zhao Ziyang, uh, uh, you know, not recorded. Uh, in the official, uh, you know, uh, propaganda or publication in China. So his name is still a political taboo in today's China. Uh, but I think, you know, uh, uh, his legacies are still relevant, at least in uh, several ways. Uh, first of all, you know, he, uh, of course, was a major reformer of China in 19, late 1970s and 1980s before he stepped down. Uh, he was a major architect of Chinese economic reform, transition of, you know, Chinese economy from a state plan, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, you know, today's, you know, situation. Actually, uh, uh, today's Chinese prosperity own a lot uh, to Joe's effort. For example, uh, China is now deeply involved into globalization. And in 1980s, uh, Zhao Ziyang proposed that kind of, a, you know, so the, uh, 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 coast area developmental program involving China into globalization uh, that was very important for China and is still very important for today's China. In the second sense, you know, in 1989, when popular protests arose to, you know, demand radical political reform, uh, actually out of control by the government. So uh, leaders, they had very different responses to this. Uh, for example, as everybody knows now, you know, Deng Xiaoping uh, represented hardliner. Uh, so eventually they mobilized uh, military forces to, you know, crack down over such pro protests. And Zhao Ziyang represented uh, softliner, I mean, actually really enthusiastic, positive responses to ordinary people's demand, popular protest could rise again. Maybe not in that, you know, huge scale as what we saw in 1989, but anyway, in the past uh, 10 or even 15 years, everywhere, you know, in China, uh, smaller, you know, protests uh, actually uh, occurred uh, everywhere in China. So uh, how the regime, how the leader responds to such kind of event, they can learn from Zhao Ziyang and also, I think, uh, whole Chinese society we can learn from Zhao Ziyang's experience in 1989 to build up more positive, you know, interaction between regime and ordinary people. Even ordinary people sometimes they take, you know, quite a radical action like, uh, you know, mass protest. Third connection between Zhao Ziyang's legacies and uh, today's China, and particularly in the future China, is about governance. And Zhao Ziyang was uh, really capable. Uh, you know, uh, statesman as, uh, you know, his records in Guangdong, uh, in Sichuan, and then in 1980s uh, as Prime Minister of China, all those records showed, you know, he could be uh, very capable to address those farmers, you know, demand to produce more food for their own consumption. As uh, in Sichuan, people said, Yao Chi Liang, Zhao Ziyang, if you want grains, Zhao Ziyang can help you, actually. So uh, now China, you know, with uh, remarkable economic development, but even more actively challenges, troubles in terms of governance. So uh, I think we can learn from Zhao Ziyang's concrete, you know, ideas about how to govern China, a transitional China, or more liberal China, or more diverse China. Uh, also Zhao Ziyang's, you know, way of thinking about governance not only, you know, making China, uh, okay, stronger and weather, but also, you know, uh, more uh, transparent 
uh, more actively uh, equal for ordinary people, having opportunity to share the prosperity. So philosophically, I also can learn from Zhao Ziyang's philosophy of governance.